This is the Louis T Network. Then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs. In the lab. Denver Broncos will win Super Bowl 50 if limit the big plays and the mistakes. Okay, if you're the Denver Broncos, you're not good enough as an offense to make mistakes. Last week and the week before that, I told you the same exact thing. I said, look, just stay out of the way of this defense. Watch those boys work, okay? They're that good. So, if you don't turn it over, if you don't give up short fields offensively, if your special team stays out of the way, and really, you need to win special teams. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but if you can just limit the mistakes, don't turn it over. If you gotta punt, 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 okay? Let your punter down the football inside the 10. Y'all not make the Panthers go 94 touchdown. That's not a bad play. What a bad play is in this game is a turnover. Is a lateral like last week. Is an Eric Peyton Manning throw. Is a Peyton Manning fumble in the pocket. That's a bad play because that's giving the Panthers a short field. Look, as good as this defense is, don't ask them to continuously bail you out in short field situations. Sudden change of possession. Don't ask them to do that. Let them defend eight yards of grass, okay? Let them defend a full field. They are at their best when they're able to make a team have to methodically drive the football down the field. Don't shorten the field for the opposition. So, don't turn the football over. And limit the big plays, okay? If you are this Broncos defense and you've done a really good job of this all season long, don't give up any big plays. This Panthers offense has been built on big plays. They run the football, set you up for a deep shot, and then when Cam takes it, he generally doesn't miss. So, they've got burners on both sides with Philly Fingers and Teddy Ball game. You have to limit the big plays. If these boys go 11 plays, 80 yards, in five minutes and 19 seconds, tip your damn cap to them. Hell of a drive. What can you say? What more can I say? Other than good drive. You can't say anything. But if these boys get you for a two play, 80 yard drive in which Cam caps it off with a 77 yard Ted Ginn Jr. touchdown strike. You slap yourself because you just gave up a big play to a big play offense. Keep everything in front of you. Make these boys earn every single point they put up on the scoreboard. Win special teams. I think the Broncos have done a magnificent job on special teams this postseason, especially in that Pittsburgh Steelers game and even to an extent. Um, last game against New England, uh, they down several punts deep in uh, New England territory, and including the, the play where Brady throws the interception to Von Miller deep in their own territory. This defense, I think, thrives in those situations when they have a offense pinned deep in their own territory. So, win special teams, a punt and downing it inside the 15, that's a win, okay? Uh, field goals, knock them home, okay? Don't miss any extra points. We saw how big missing an extra point can be and uh, deciding factor of a ball game. Don't allow the Panthers to win special teams. If you can win that portion of the game, because I feel like, and I think this every time the Broncos play with this defense, you're gonna win the defensive side of the football. Gotta win two out of the three phases of, of the game if you're looking to win the football game, usually. And if you're gonna win defense and you can win special teams, then you can win this football game. Win special teams if you're the Denver Broncos. You must, all caps, M-U-S-T, he must stop the run if you're the Denver Broncos. That's not optional. This is almost like training day. If you do not stop the run, then we have a problem. You gotta stop the run in this football game. If you don't, you're gonna lose. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you do not stop the Panthers from running the football and they got everything going, they got the dive, they got the fake dive pitch, they got the fake dive read option, they got all that stuff going and doing reverses and having a blast on you on the run game, on the ground, you're done. Because then it's gonna open up a deep shot and I guarantee you they're gonna hit one or two of those if they're running the football effectively. You must stop the run in this football game. That is the first thing you must do. You cut off the head of the run game and the rest of that Panthers offensive body will die. I promise you. But if they run the football, they are gonna have a lot of fun. They're gonna be handing out some footballs to the fans in the end zones if you don't stop the run in this, in this game. I'm telling you that right now. Contain Cam Newton, the runner. 
Okay, Cam Newton, the passer, has been really good this season. And so, while I say that, make sure you contain that dude as well. But Cam Newton, the runner, can be very impactful in this football game if you allow him to be. Look, Cam doesn't want to take shots. I, I, the thing I love about Cam Newton, the runner, is that he knows his limitations. Just because I'm 6'5", 245, doesn't mean I'm trying to get hit by a 6'5", 295-pound defensive lineman or a 6'4", 250-pound linebacker. No, I'm not trying to do that. So what Cam does is the site of contact, he's going down. So if you can get to Cam, and Cam will go down at the line of scrimmage. If he sees contact coming and he keeps it on read option and then somebody's coming and they're big, he'll get down. Contain Cam in the ring then. Keep him in the pocket. Don't allow him out of space. Don't allow him to impact this game. If Cam has seven carries for uh, 67 yards and a touchdown, you're probably going to lose this football game. Probably. It's not a guarantee, okay? But you're probably going to lose this game because that's too many yards. That's too great of an impact for him as a runner. This season, Cam Newton has averaged right around four yards a carry. That's not that great for a quarterback because, again, when you run as a quarterback, it's unexpected usually. So they're normally upwards of six yards, seven yards a carry. But Cam's a different specimen. So if he's able to get four yards a pop, that's still really good for what they're trying to do in the grand scheme of their offense. But if he's getting six, seven, eight, and just the example I gave you, almost 10 yards a pop, that's not good. That's not good at all. So contain Cam Newton, the runner. Make him beat you from the pocket if he does. Damn, you got me. I give up. You got my hands up. Stop the run, which includes Cam Newton, the runner, and make him beat you with his arm. And if he does, say, damn, you are the MVP. You are Superman. But if he can't, you're going to have a chance to win this football game. But you got to stop the run, and you need to start by stopping Cam Newton, the runner. Keep the score under 27 points. Look, you don't want any part of a shootout, okay? A, if it's a shootout, either your defense hasn't performed at the level that they need to, and of course, if you don't perform at the level you need to defensively, you don't stand a chance in this game. And B, if this game gets upwards of 27, 30 points, that means the offense probably turned the football over a couple times, or special teams didn't do their job, and they might have even had a boo-boo somewhere in there. Either way, if this game is up north of 27, you're going to lose the football game. You don't want to get into a shootout because that's not who you are anymore. Two years ago, when you were in the Super Bowl, yeah, you could score 30 with the best of them. That was nothing. Hell, if the game wasn't in the 30s, that was a problem for you. But it's a different day and age now, and with this offense, the way they're constructed, just don't mess up and allow the defense to do what it is they do the best in the league, which is grind teams to a halt. Keep this game under 27. Really? I think if you can keep this game under 24, I'm telling you right now, if the score is under 24, you win. I guarantee you that. You got my word. If this score, both teams under 24 points, you win the football game. Okay? But if this thing gets north of 27, you lose. I can guarantee you that as well. So you don't want to get into a shootout with these boys. You're not built like that. Stay in your lane. And in your lane means under 27 points. Attack the Panthers' vulnerabilities in this game, okay? To me, that's the last thing that the Broncos need to do is attack the vulnerabilities of this Panthers football team. Now, they don't have many. When you go 15-1 and one and 17-1 and one overall, <laughs> you don't have many deficiencies, okay? <laughs> but there are a couple that I see on this team, one on each side of the football. On the defensive side, their cornerbacks, they don't scare anybody. Josh Norman does by himself, but you can take Josh Norman completely out of the game by not throwing the ball to his side, okay? So that's an easy fix. But they got Robert McClain. They got this dude like week 11. He has no business starting in the Super Bowl. And I see guys taking advantage of him every single week. He is a liability on the field, okay? Go after him each and every single time that you can. Cortland Finnegan was on the couch just two months ago, okay? Nobody, he was basically retired, okay, but because of injuries to their, their positions at the cornerback position, specifically with the name Ben Rickery and Charles Tillman, Peanut Tillman, they had to go get guys off the street like Robert McClain, like Courtney Finnegan, who are liabilities on the football field. Attack these dudes. Stay away from Josh Norman. Neither one of their safeties should scare you. Go after their secondary, but stay away from Josh Norman. Pick your spots. Know who you're dealing with, 
and go after some of those weak links in their secondary. Now, on the offensive side of football, you got to stop the run. I already talked about that, how big of a deal that is. The reason why it's such a big deal, you're not afraid of Philly Fingers, okay, at receiver. You're not afraid of Ted King Jr. You're not afraid of Devin Funches at receiver. You're not afraid of any of those dudes. You are afraid of Greg Olson, but you're going to do him just like you did Gronk. Now, Gronk went off, but he's Gronk. Greg Olson, not the same athlete. So you got to make sure you keep tabs on 88. Greg O! Because that dude is a monster. And if you let him loose, he'll make you pay. And Cam, that's his blankie. That's, Cam sucks his thumb, and he's got his little blankie, and it's called Greg Olson, okay? So if you know on third and eight, Cam is loading up, he's probably looking for, for double eight. So you need to keep tabs on him and make sure you don't allow him. But guess what the weak link is? Those receivers, okay? They're not beating court. They're not beating Bradley Roby. They're not beating Aqib Tlaib. They're not beating Chris Harris Jr. You know that. You know that. So what you need to do is strangle those boys. <laughs> strangle them. Stop the run and then put Cam in that offense in third and long situations and put those receivers to sleep, okay? I've talked about Dave Gettleman and his inability to put the, the, the right pieces on this football team. They also have old man Jericho, and I think you gotta watch out for him. Of all the receivers, that's the one that scares me the most. Old man Jericho knows how to get it done. And unlike the other boys I named, he doesn't drop the football. He catches just about everything. So watch out for old man Jericho. He'll bless you as well. But I think to me, the two guys you need to worry about, in the short to intermediate game, which is going to hurt you if you don't stop the run, is Old Man Jericho and Greg Olson. Greg O! But those other boys, they don't skate. You can shut those boys down. They're frail body boys that you can come up, lock them up, lock them up, lock them up, right at the line of scrimmage. Get in their face, jam them up, hold them, grab them, do those things that the Denver Broncos do better than anybody in the league. Stop those boys, shut them down, click, click, put the locks on them. And then go after Cam with those front four boys that wreak havoc. Yes, sir. Jackson, Wolf, Fed Miller, and Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> those boys could be scared. So, I said all of that to say this. Panthers don't have many vulnerabilities, okay? Their linebackers, top notch. Josh Norman, one of the best. Came on short, havoc wreaker. But there are some other guys on that defense that you can target. And offensively, Greg Olsen is a problem. So is Jonathan Stewart. So is the man that touches the football on every stat, Ace Newton. But I'm not afraid. You're not afraid. I know those corners aren't afraid of Philly Fingers and not afraid of Teddy Ball game. I know they're not afraid of Devin Funches. So you can lock those boys up. I am afraid of Jericho Cotri because he's a crafty veteran that'll win on the inside. I am afraid of Greg O. Greg O. Greg Olson. Because he's just a beast. Period. So pick your spots. Much like defense on the offensive side, pick your battles. But you got to stop the run. But attack the vulnerabilities of this Panthers team. Be very methodical in the decisions you make on both sides of the football because they can and will impact the outcome of this football game. If you're the Denver Broncos, those are your keys to the football game. You can win this game, but you gotta do those things in order to win. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room, or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Then it gets even better when your team makes the playoffs.